everyone, it's me, Matt. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me on today's channel. Sorry that I haven't been putting content out recently. I am actually recovering through quite a serious injury. I've broken both of my elbows, coming off an e-scooter at full speed, landing on uh, my outstretched hands. So I apologize. It's very difficult for me to make content. Um, but at the moment, uh, I'm trying to sort of make the most of my time with what I can do with the medication I'm on. So I thought I'd make a little video for you talking about how the change of doctrine has happened with a attack helicopters in the situation going on in Ukraine. Now, specifically, uh, I'm mentioning Ukraine in regards to a tactic, but not the conflict itself. I don't really want to zero in on the Ukrainian war. I've, I've mentioned many times before, uh, unfortunately, I cannot and will not talk about it directly. However, it is interesting seeing tactics uh, change in some of the footage that I've seen recently going on in Ukraine. And one of those tactics is the use of of short-range missiles or medium-range missiles from attack helicopters or ground attack helicopters specifically using um, sort of the tubular rockets that are designed to take out infantry for the most part or buildings uh, and small soft skin vehicles not primarily armor for the most part because it's an area effect weapon not really a direct attack weapon such as that of a guided missile um, that is either using wire or infrared or sacklose kind of setups and what I'm finding is they're not being used in a traditional sense. What I mean by that is helicopters are not launching them at a pinpoint target or an area uh, defined by what they can see. It is actually being used almost like an artillery weapon. And today's video is really focusing on, is it effective? Is it actually a tactic that works? Well, we're going to review it a little bit here because I'm finding some mixed results and some input from other people that I've been speaking to has been quite interesting because a lot of people that are actually part of the um, helicopter attack force across the world, whether it be the Americans or the Brits, have a very biased opinion on this. And I, myself included, have a little bit of a biased opinion on this because I perceive that the most direct and capable method of using these kind of tubular rockets that are not guided is to fire them directly at an aimed target short of the you know swoop down stand off by about a kilometer or two fire directly at the target and then peel back away and this is normally done in sorties so they'll have a helicopter that will come in fire a few tubes pull away and the helicopter behind it will then follow through and that will continue in sort of a train motion until the helicopters have peeled off enough to be in a safe location and most of the time when they do that engagement you'll see them popping um, flares to protect themselves from ground-based uh, anti-aircraft but of course, that is very risky in what we're seeing in modern day conflicts of today. We're not seeing traditional engagements of mass battle group on battle group engagements. We're talking about sort of a combination of insurgency slash head on conflict, which is very difficult to see, you know, a bunch of um, short range air defense missiles or hand carried uh, air defense missiles uh, being able to knock out these aircraft from significant distances away. So the tactic has changed a little bit and as I said the biased opinion from the West is this is completely redundant. It makes no sense on what helicopters are doing. Now the new tactic is that helicopters are peeling away a lot further away from their missile firing and they are firing them in sort of an indirect capability. And what do I mean by that? Well in artillery we have direct fire which is basically pointing the barrel directly at a target, firing the round and then watching it engage and hit the target. Indirect fire is you're probably not going to see the round land where it hits, which is normally what my role takes in part of. As a forward observer, I adjust the fire for the artillery in the background so they can engage correctly. What's happening now though is helicopters are using the same tactic for indirect fire. They're not actually fully able to see where the missiles are landing. They're pulling up a little bit, allowing their tubes to elevate to a certain trajectory or elevation launching salvos of rockets and then pulling away again and it's up to the observer that's ahead of the target uh, or close to the target to see where those salvos land now in my opinion i think that's highly ineffective and as i said i'm quite biased but you have to look at it from the other set right the other pair of boots that are being worn here Helicopters are an extremely expensive and very critical asset to any combat fighting force and putting them into the traditional sense when you know there's ground-based air defense is very, very dangerous. And as we know from footage that is going on in Ukraine, lots of helicopters are losing at that battle, sadly. But the reality also is that huge volleys of these rockets can be replenished from helicopters very quickly. The pods that in, you know encapsulate the rockets can be popped on and off quickly. If there's a helicopter landing point at a certain area that can replenish these aircraft, they can basically continually launch salvos and salvos of rockets. Now, 
In terms of cost effectiveness, I would say this is very ineffective. It costs a lot of money to maintain and keep a helicopter flying with its fuel, uh, and pilots are very, very scarce. So there's even risk of you standing off away from a target and using this indirect method of still being shot out the sky by a long or medium range surface to air missile. But if you can use these helicopters and use the munitions that are available for them, which would not normally be traditionally used um, in this sense from a longer distance, you're protecting your assets, which are those helicopters, but providing a massive amount of firepower. Now, not as accurate as they would normally be when a pilot's looking through his heads-up display and you know looking through the sights, being able to do those low swoops, engage, see where the missiles are landing, re-engage, and, and you know have the JTACs or the ground base support really direct that fire in a lot more tightly. But I must admit, when you're looking at, you know, close to 20 rockets per pod being launched from indirect um, salvos like this, from a sortie of, say, five or six aircraft, they can take out a square kilometer if you really wanted to. It could do some real damage. And some of these rockets are obviously um, designed for different purposes. You have high explosive, you have, um, you know, anti-personnel, sort of ex ex almost like a proximity kind of pro projectile or munition that creates a bomb burst in the sky. Um, and all different capabilities of these rockets as well. But what I'm thinking this tactic is being used for primarily is for a number of things, is protection of the asset, right? Protecting their aircraft. If they're going to use them, they're not, they're not going to use them close engagements like we've been seeing recently due to that massive volley of anti-aircraft capabilities. The other thing is using that ammunition. I mean, there's a lot of those rocket pods. <laughs> you know, militaries that have helicopters that are able to engage like this tend to have a huge surplus of these missiles or the rockets. I don't want to say missiles because it kind of directs more to the guided setup. But the rocket pods, there's hundreds and thousands of these pods and they need to be used. Now, we've seen it in, you know, uh, insurgency operations where they mount these rocket pods to the back of a RAV4 um, or a Toyota pickup truck or a Hilux and they're just launching missiles off the back of the truck. Again, highly ineffective, but it still gives ability for some form of, you know, uh, high Mars or rocket capability. Just very, very, very primitive. But in a helicopter situation, uh, you're getting a huge amount of extended range. Uh, and on top of that, as I said, you're being able to capitalize on those aircraft, not only being able to launch the rockets, but provide a lot of reconnaissance in the air at the same time, either looking out or scouting the flanks. So it's twofold. You know, you're using a helicopter that's safer, being more standoff away from that engagement bubble that could be engaged from the short range air defense, but also having some reconnaissance in the air at the same time. And of course, you can always rely upon the, you know, the cannon or the uh, guided missiles on the sides to protect against any, uh, you know, potential engagements that are actually going to threaten the battle group that you're supporting that's a little closer to you that hasn't quite got to where that salvo of missiles you've just launched from your pods are. It's a very interesting tactic, something I think we're going to see a lot more of. Um, do I feel it's going to be the standard of helicopter? To attack doctrine? Absolutely not. I think it's a very unique situation that these are being used in. Uh, normally it's via militaries that have a very um, scarce supply of helicopters and pilots because it's fine having hundreds of helicopters but a helicopter is quite a complicated thing to fly um, and having pilots to fly them is just as more you know, detrimental to lose, obviously, than it is the helicopter itself. So having these standoff indirect missile volleys being launched, which we're seeing more and more of in, in footage across the conflict in Ukraine, uh, you can definitely attest to say, yep, yeah, this is probably going to be something we're going to see more of, but I don't think it's going to be a standard. So what do you guys think? What do you think is going to be the status of this kind of tactic of the future? Do you feel that maybe indirect missiles or rocket pods are going to be more sort of fire and forget that can be fired at a longer distance without having to worry about it, uh, you know, actually being seen visually via the targeting pod or the helicopter pilot or gunner itself? What I mean by that is we've seen a lot of missiles out there being used today, like the Spike ATGM, that can be fired without the need for um, visual identification of a target and can be launched an extreme distance and actually be searching en route to wherever the target area is and then as targets are scanned and found on premise they then pull down and turn into a munition can actually engage do you think this is something we're going to see from helicopters in the future they you know can't see the target so well but they're able to launch missiles that have seeker heads that are allowing it to hunt as it flies i think that's some you know something that could be quite interesting to look at in the future but do you feel that this kind of primitive indirect fire method where helicopters just pointing tubes into the sky and launching and hoping that they land in some form of area of destruction is effective let me know in the comment section below i really appreciate you guys stopping by on today's video if you did enjoy it please click the thumb button it really does help folks and of course if you enjoy my content click on the subscribe button and make sure to be notified of more videos coming up in the future by clicking the little bell button also i hope you have a wonderful day all the best folks Bye bye